Hey watch friends, today we're going to be taking a look at this latest offering from the Italian microbrand Vicaria, and this is their upcoming model, the Calypso. This one will be coming to Kickstarter on July 9th of 2022, so just about a day after publishing this review. I'll say up front, the launch pricing is going to be impressive on this. You can actually pre-order through their site prior to the Kickstarter for around 200 US dollars that's converted from euros. But the Kickstarter early, super early bird pricing will be around 220 US dollars. So we'll talk about this as it goes through, but I think it's going to pack a lot of value. First, let's go ahead and take a quick look at what this comes with for the pouch. They have changed up the packaging. You now get a nice canvas style pouch that does have five individual watch slots. It's a typical roll type construction and it does have their branding on the outside. As for the watch itself, like the other Vicaria pieces we've looked at, it comes standard with a two year warranty. The specs on this dive model are going to be coming in for the case at roughly the three o'clock to nine o'clock is 41.8 millimeters. The bezel steps down ever so slightly to 41.5 millimeters. The lugs on this are going to be a strap change friendly 22 millimeters. The lug to lug is a fairly long for the size 20, uh, I'm sorry, 50 millimeters for, uh, for that. So, you know, it is still, I think, right on the cusp for most smaller wrists of being able to work with that, especially with the female end links, but it is a little on the longer side than, uh, than I might otherwise expect. The thickness is coming in at 13.7 millimeters, and that's including this double dome sapphire crystal which does include inner, uh, inner AR coating as well. The movement is a nice workhorse. It is the Seiko NH35, so it comes with all the features you'd expect there, hacking, hand winding, etc. It is a low beat movement, and as you can see from this, it does not have a date, so that this one will have that ghost date position, that first click. You have to stop there and then click out to actually hack it, because they did not include an NH38. The water resistance is going to be nice and versatile for a dive style watch, it is rated at 300 meters or 30 atmospheres of water resistance. So plenty for all of your typical needs. The weight, size to my six and a half inch wrist on this bracelet is only coming in at 159.9. And I say only with kind of an asterisk or caveat. There's a lot of metal in this. So I really don't think it's too bad overall weight for the style of watch and for the overall proportions. Certainly it's not going to be a featherweight by any means, but it's not a particularly heavy one either. I found it balances out pretty well, right around that sweet spot for what I'd expect for a watch of this style. So now that we have a feel for that, let's go ahead and take a quick look at some of the color options that are available. There's actually going to be two different dial options. There's the black one that we're looking at today, and then there's additionally a brown one. They talk about that these do color shift a fair amount. I haven't seen it so much on the black version, but that being said, the brown is supposed to have more of a color shift. What you're going to notice for consistency across each of the options is the dial itself has an aggressively applied sand texture, and they describe it as having a pearlescent finish. I will say, you know, as the light hits across it, you get a little bit of that, but I'd say it's pretty typical of the sheen of a sand dial in my experience. The dial itself is a pretty clean construction, though it does have a total of five lines of text. You have the two at the top with Vicaria, an Italian watch company, and then down at the six o'clock position, you have the name Calypso, the 300 meters, of course, in Italian, and then the automatic as well, which is con consistent with the overall theme for, uh, for the watch in the company brand. Out towards the perimeter, you do have a rehot, and that does have individual minute and second hashes as well. Shifting over to the hardware, this handset is what I would describe as being a Dauphin handset. It looks like a pretty traditional Dauphin, not faceted, so it does not have the crease down the middle. However, it does have loom applied, which is not that uncommon for it, but it kind of brings together almost the feel of like a dressier style watch with a dive watch, and it does kind of fit with the angular theme of the markers which speaking of the markers, as you can see, they're what I would describe almost like a teeth kind of construction. They're triangles all the way around, most prominently at the 12, three, six, and nine, and then smaller for the other portions. But with that construction to me, or that layout to me, it puts me in mind almost like a Seiko uh, for, for that. And this watch as a whole, I think kind of is sort of a Rolex packaging with Seiko touches and, and accents, and of course their own unique design elements as well. So it's, a, it's an interesting uh, combination as you go through and I found it works. But as far as the handset, the handset, again, with Dauphin uh, for the minute and hour, then the second hand, you're going to have a delicate second hand that has a very subtle counterbalance to that out at the tip. All of this is going to be loomed with the exception of the second hand. So you can see here, the hour and minute hand, I think they have decent application of loom. As we'll talk about further, I would like to see that kicked up some, but I think it's performed adequately. The markers themselves actually do perform well. 
and it is a mix of C3 and BGW9, and then at the 12 o'clock, you do have a Loom Pip as well. So you have a nice mix here overall, and I think it's relatively in keeping with the style, but being with a dive watch, expectations are a little higher. As for the bezel, the bezel, as you'd expect, is going to be a unidirectional bezel. This is 120 click, and let's go ahead and take a listen to that. As you can hear here, it has a pretty audible click to that. I will say, to my ear, it's a little bit on the tinny side, and check this out. It does unfortunately have some play to it. That is definitely something that I would like to see tightened up on the production version. I do think that that could be cleaned up. I'd like to see that be stiffened as a whole to reduce some of that play. But additionally, I think it's possibly a little on the light side, which I think is part of what's lending to that overall play. Not a bad feel, though, overall. The, the bezel itself is going to be, I believe, stainless steel for the actual bezel, but the bezel insert is aluminum, and you can see the dull texture here to where it does have on the inner ring you have more of that like stainless kind of finish or that silver finish and then you have black anodization on the exterior as far as the loom pattern or the rather the uh, bezel pattern i would describe this milling as being kind of like a scallop cut in there it's kind of like a cross between a scallop and a coin edge right on that lip as you go through there as i'm sure you noticed the bezel itself is going to be dual so you have on the exterior you have a dive kind of configuration there and on the interior, you're going to have a 12-hour bezel uh, layout. So that's nice for dual functionality there, depending on your individual needs and wants out of the watch. Shifting over to the case, and I should mention, I should have mentioned earlier, this is actually a prototype that was loaned into the channel. So do note, you're going to see, see scratches throughout. Unfortunately, this one was pretty roughly handled as the prototype by some prior, uh, prior uh, reviewers in uh, Photo photographers there. So that uh, that being said, I do note, of course, the production version should be a completely cleaned up and uniform polishing there. That's not what you would expect. But you're going to see heavy application of polishing. You can see across the case, it does have sort of like a slab construction to that, that you can see this does have curvature throughout. So it's relatively flowing lines from every angle that you look at it. But it does have polishing pretty much everywhere as you go through uh, throughout the case. But it does have at the top of the lugs. So when you're looking from actually down at the at the watch, you'll see nice brushing that comes around to the lugs, which I do think breaks it up. It's certainly a heavy application of polishing overall, as we'll see on the bracelet as well, but it is, is good to see that they at least broke that up. The head itself actually does stay fairly flat. You can see there's a very slight downturn to the lugs, but otherwise it's a pretty, pretty flat profile and it does sit proud of the case back, though I haven't found it to have too much of that flying saucer effect on the wrist. It hasn't been too bad, though I would like to see that kick down a little bit, either thinner case back or more downturn to the lugs themselves. At the four o'clock position, you have the crown that is sandwiched in between these integrated crown guards, which just wrap and swoop down nicely. No sharp edges there. Nicely built. The crown itself is coming in at 6.8 millimeters, and again, that's located at the four o'clock position. It is a screw down construction, as I'm sure you'd expect for a dive watch, and it is signed out on the exterior. As for the case back, the case back on this is a pretty simple construction overall. It is going to be full polishing on the back, which is relatively uncommon for a uh, case back, and I will say makes it a fingerprint magnet, certainly. The mirror polish, though, does have etched into it. You have the actual Calypso, so it's in keeping with its namesake, as well as the text as you go throughout. Shifting over to the bracelet, the bracelet on this, as you'd expect, is going to be 22 millimeters at the lug. It does taper down, though, at the clasp, to 20 millimeters, which I think is about the sweet spot for a taper, and that's part of what keeps the overall balance for this. As you might have already seen, this does have female end links, which is, I'm sure, welcome for many of you, especially with having that 50 millimeter lug to lug. That keeps it very wearable for small wrists overall. The construction is going to be a three link construction, and as you can see, it has polishing on the center link, and then it does keep to brushing to kind of balance things out on the outer two links. The construction is going to be uh, p held in with pins. So this is not screw uh, for, uh, for adjusting your links. I will have a link to uh, toolkits on Amazon. You can get them inexpensively, still easy to change. And then you don't have to worry about pins back, or screws backing out with, uh, with the pin style. The clasp itself is signed. It is a traditional fold over style construction and it is going to be milled as well. So you have nice clean bridge application there. It has three micro adjustment holes on the exterior. And one of the things that I will definitely note with the bracelet as a whole, the articulation is surprisingly excellent on this. It folds over completely flat on the case back. And then additionally, as you look through the drape, I mean, it really hangs across the wrist 
which we'll talk more about the comfort, but I, that has lended to uh, nicely to the overall comfort of this watch. All right, so now that we have a better feel for the watch itself, let's go ahead and take a look at some sort of comps. First, I wanted to bring in, this is the Australia Sea Shade, which this one is one that's actually in the process of shipping. This was previously a Kickstarter um, that was delayed like many other Kickstarters out there, uh, but this one is uh, currently shipping. That, uh, that being said, this, the reason why I wanted to compare these two, they're similar sizing as far as the 42, give you an idea of the sizing there as far as the visual. But the big thing is these are two kind of value contenders on sort of opposite ends of the spectrum. This one went really for the true value in terms of low cost at around $200. This one went for extreme value around $400 by packing in a huge kit where you had bracelet, three straps, scratch resistant coating, sapphire everywhere, Salida SW200 movement, but came in around $400, so about double the price, but I will say you get a lot of bang for the buck with this one as well. So really kind of looking at it from two different perspectives depending on your budget. Another value contender that I wanted to bring in is this Wise Hitman. This one comes in around 300, give or take, uh, for that. And you can see, you know, this, this one we've looked at in the past. We have full reviews actually of the C-Shade as well. This one um, comes standard on a bracelet also. This is an aftermarket strap here from a RZE uh, that I have a parachute strap. But this one though, I've got to say, the finishing is impeccable on this. The bezel, I mean, this thing is dialed into just about perfection. That Wicked watch we recently looked at here, that Pearl Diver, that thing certainly gave it a run for for its money. But this is, I mean, it's like dialing in a safe. But this one comes in around the 300, so kind of right in between those two price-wise, but you get a heck of a lot for the money on this one too. So you, it's really becoming an increasingly competitive market out there. So it really depends to me on what your budget is and kind of what you're looking for. But there are a number of them out there that I would recommend. In addition to checking this one out, which I certainly do recommend, um, there are a lot, of, a lot of other options out there as well. It's getting to be tough to make decisions. All right, so now that we have a better feel for all of that, let's go ahead and wrap things up with my personal view of some of the positives, some of the critiques, which we've already touched upon, as well as the summary. First, for the positives, I'm going to say price point coming in around $200. You know, I don't mean this in, in a loose sense or in a disparaging sense, but this is pretty much throwaway pricing. And by that, I mean, if something goes wrong with this, while it has reliable components and it has a two-year warranty, the NH35, those kind of things, before you'd go and have it serviced or buy a new movement for it, honestly, at $200, I'd be pretty darn tempted just to buy another one to, uh, to replace that. So, I mean, that's great there. And with that comes, it's an excellent everyday kind of piece there. So if you want a beater watch or if you're just looking for something that's a different styling but isn't going to break the bank, I think it's hit strongly there. The same thing is true with the specs. You know, with having sapphire crystal, with, with having, uh, you know, the overall stainless construction, with having a nice workhorse movement in it, I think you get a good bit for your money at the $200 price point. Comfort, we already talked about with having this excellent bracelet articulation, the overall balance on the wrist. I think this has very nice comfort. And then for me personally, I've come around to look. I think it's a pretty cool look overall. I like the kind of sort of Rolex packaging with the sort of Seiko-esque kind of marker configuration in those pieces. Um, you know, there are some things that I would like to change that we'll talk about in a moment. But that being said, I think it's a pretty cool setup overall. As far as some of the critiques, the bezel action we already talked about. Certainly, I would like to see that be tightened up. I think there's definitely room for improvement there. But it should be as simple as just adding a stiffer spring in there for the bezel insert. The hand size. I said that we would revisit this under the loom portion. I would definitely like to see the hands kicked up in size. I think the markers are to me disproportionate, especially the 12, 3, 6, and 9. I think the hands really need to be kicked up. I'd like to see the minute hand be both broader and longer. I'd like to see the hour hand be definitely broader, possibly a little longer there as well. And then the same thing's true for the second hand. So across the board, just bump all of those up. What that will also do is that will allow for more application of loom, which I think will really be more in keeping with the markers and really balance everything out nicely. That will also add to the legibility, which right now can be a little bit tough, especially as you start getting some of those angles. Yeah, you get the facets. Yeah, you can see there. But really, I rely a lot of the time, especially on this black dial, where the facets can pick up the dark shades, or rather, I should say the polish can pick up the dark shades uh, around it. I rely heavily on the loom, so I want to see more loom area there to add more contrast. And then the gratuitous use of polishing. You know, this really comes down to whether it's your style or not. For me personally, I'm not a huge polish guy, and this has a heck of a lot of it outside of the length, side of the case, down uh, for the uh, center of the bracelet links. Across the board, you've got a lot of sheen all over. I found I haven't, I haven't minded it in use as much as I thought I would, but certainly I would like to see a little more of that toned down. Accents of polish are, are my sweet spot, but not quite this much. But that really is just completely a subjective call there. 
So where does that leave us? Kind of where we started with this. I think at $200, I think certainly it is worth a look. If you are interested in adding a new dive watch, if this kind of style overall um, fits for uh, for your needs right now, I don't think you can go wrong with it. Certainly, I think it's worth considering for uh, for backing at that kind of a price point. Is it perfect? No, but I do suspect and hope that they will clean some of that up with the production version. But at $200, it's pretty tough to go wrong. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you did like this, please do smash that like button. Additionally, if you haven't done so already, please do tap that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.